Hi everybody and welcome back. We're continuing our chapter on Newton's Laws and Forces and uh, we're at a point right here that I, um, I kind of like this part. It's called Transla Translational I'm sorry, Equilibrium. And it sounds like a big long com complex word. Um, but it really means all forces add up to zero. All right? Translational refers to an object that is moving. Um, or you might say the, uh, the concept of moving. All right? Um, if something is, if a car is moving, you say it's translating. Now, again, it has nothing to do with language, but it just means it's moving across a surface, right? But translational equilibrium means that all forces that are trying to get something to move are balanced. So that they all add up, well, they all cancel out and they all add up to zero, and so that there is no motion. So the nice part about the concept of translational equilibrium is that we can say that the net force on the whole system, or at least on the object that we're dealing with, is going to be zero. This is what we would say, um, we would say the net force equals, yep, I won't do a green, I'll do a different color, um, equals mass times acceleration, right? Well, the idea of translational equilibrium is that there is no acceleration, so all problems are going to, um, all the forces that are involved are going to have to add up to zero. So, that's kind of nice because we can always make that assumption. So, the, the, um, the other way we state the net force is net force is um, a sum of component forces, right? So, force 1 plus force 2 minus force 3, etc. All right, well, what must be true of all those is they must add up to zero because they're a statement for the net force as is that right there. So, the, our nice thing is that um, the object is not moving and all the forces had to add up to zero. So we're just going to go ahead and do an example on that, example 512. All right, we have a pot of flowers right here, and the hope is that it's not translated, it's not, um, it's not moving, because if it was moving, it would probably be falling to the earth or, uh, again, not staying where it's supposed to be. Typically, when we hang plants of flowers, we want them to stay. So the assumption is that it's, um, all forces are in translational equilibrium. Okay? So we have a 6.2 kilogram pot of flowers. I'm going to go ahead and write that right here. The mass equals 6.2 kilograms. And we know that that kilogram uh, or that mass um, affected by Earth's gravity is going to create a downward weight force that we call mg. Now the problem has it stated as w. We'll, I'm not going to cross that out. We can just leave it right there. Um, but the reminder for us of how to calculate the, the weight force is simply to write it as mg. Okay? And we have this, um, this pot right here that is held in place by two strings. One is up at an angle right here, and the other one is straight across hanging uh, or um, attached to a wall. It's, um, it's horizontal. All right. So um, we need to figure out what the tension in each wire has to be um, in order for, number one, this pot to not go anywhere, and number two, um, for, um, uh, for the force, or well, the forces of tension here and tension here to balance out not only each other, but also to balance out mg. And one important thing um, to point out is that if you try to do this with one wire, with one string, what would probably happen is the one attached to the wall, the wall would droop down, and then the other one would come up like that. Uh, and then your, your flower pot would be hanging from down here, all right? Because the flower pot would slide to a point such that the tension would be the same in the, in the whole entire wire. Well, that's not the case right here. The idea is that these are two separate wires. So there's a wire here that it's like tied to the top of the flower pot, and this wire right here is also tied to the flower pot as well. Um, and they, they can have two different tensions in them, all right? So we want to find... Uh, the tension in each wire. Oh, by the way, I should point out that theta equals 40 degrees. All right, this angle theta right here. We're going to find out what tension 2 and tension 1 is. All right, so tension 1. Does tension 1 do anything to counteract the downward force of, gra of gravity? That is, the, the, the weight force. It doesn't, right? It can't because it's completely at right angles to the downward pull of gravity. 
But then what is counteracting the downward pull of gravity? Well, this tension right here. The fact that we have this, um, this string or, uh, or wire, I guess, that is attached sort of from up above, that there is some vertical component of tension too right here. So we probably do well to find um, the vertical component um, or to, to start with tension too because it has a vertical component. All right. Let's go ahead and take that and draw that in. So I'm going to call that T2Y. All right. Now, if it has a T2Y, it must also have a T2X component as well. All right. T2X, and we'll find out what that is in just a second, too. But T2Y, what is that going to be? Well, the Y component of this tension is, uh, the, the fact that there's tension here at all, the Y component is created by what? It is created by this downward weight force right here. So we're going to say the Y component of this, the tension in the spring, is going to be equal yet opposite to our downward pull of gravity. So we're going to say that is going to be the same thing as mg. Hopefully you can see that okay. I know it's red on, kind of red. Um, well, let's find out what mg is, all right, because we're probably going to want to be able to, um, to, to work with that. So mg, that's going to be 6.2 kilograms times or 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're going to get a weight force, a downward weight force of, uh, where do I get? 60.8. Now I'm going to call that, uh, I'm going to call it 61. Uh, I'm sorry, 6.2. No, I'm going to call it 60.8. Okay? 60.8 because I know I'm not going to hold you guys really um, too tightly to sig figs, but. Uh, our original value did have three significant figures, so this should too, okay? So 60.8 what? 60.8 newtons, right? That's an important value to know. That is the weight force, and so that's going to be the tension, or you might say the Y component of tension. That's 60.8 newtons. All right, let's go ahead and solve for tension two. Um, the tension, um, this right here, the tension in this wire. All right, well, if the vertical component, the y component, ty equals 60.8 newtons, and we know that theta equals 40 degrees, then we should be able to find the hypotenuse, or T2y, okay? Find the hypotenuse. After all, we know that um, theta, I'm sorry, the sine of theta, I'm trying to erase here, sorry. The sine of theta, T2 is question mark, equals opposite of our hypotenuse, right? So that's T2y over T2. So therefore, our tension 2 is going to be T2y over the sine of theta. All right, what is that T2y? Well, that's 60.8 newtons, right? 60.8. Newtons and uh, sine of 40 degrees, so that means tension 2 is going to be 60.8 divided by sine of 40. Sine of 40, I get 94.6 newtons. 94.6. And there we go, there's our tension in line 2 right there. That's good to know. Um, but we also need to find um, tension in line 1 as well. So we said, so our, our logic was this. We can know the vertical component of this because it has to be equally yet opposite to the downward pull of gravity right here. So it's balanced out vertically now. Now we're asked to find T1, which is a horizontal component. So that means all the horizontal forces have to be balanced, or components of forces, I should say, have to be balanced. So that means T1 has to be, yet, has to be equal yet opposite to T2x. Okay, does that make sense? T1 equals T2x. Um, or you could say T1 minus T2x equals 0, because right, didn't we say all forces have to balance out to 0? So we can say they're equal yet opposite, so we can just set them equal to each other. All right, let's find what T2x is. So T2 is 94.6. Newtons, to find the x component, we take it times a cosine of theta, right? Times a cosine of 40 degrees. 
and uh, times cosine 40, I have it in my calculator right here, I get 72.5, 72.5 newtons for T1. And then that's it. And there you have it, all right? So I kind of, I figured out T2i by fi figuring out the, um, the weight force. So that gives us the full value of T2. And then we could say, all right, well, since T1 and T2x have to be equal and opposite, we'll just find T2x from T2 and say that's the magnitude of T1, even though they clearly are in opposite directions. All right? So that's example 512. That's one of our first examples of translational equilibrium. I'm going to stop right there for now. The next um, video segment, example 513, is going to be another uh, translational equilibrium problem as well. But again, the assumption here is that all forces have to add up to zero. So any force that is in one direction is going to have to have a, an equal yet opposite force in the opposite direction, canceling it out. All right. Well, thanks for following along. I'll see you on the next one.